Welcome to the Fully Engaged Fitness Podcast, where you'll be hearing from the top fitness experts from the engaged personal training community of businesses. These include client interviews and success stories, insights and tips from our top fitness experts, and the unique approach that we bring to our clients that have helped transform thousands of lives over the last 10 years in business. Don't forget to like and subscribe this podcast so that you can be the first one in the know. Now let's get into this episode. All right, welcome back to the Fully Engaged Fitness Podcast. My name is Devin Gage, uh, and welcome back to the Engage Way series, where I tell you all of the philosophies that have made Engage Personal Training, Engage Strength Training, a leader in the fitness industry and the fastest growing private fitness brand in the United States. Today, we're going to talk about habit change and just overall behavior change, uh, which is a huge part of our approach at Engage Personal Training. Uh, We are considered the noom of gyms, which means our entire approach is built on a deep understanding of psychology and behavior change. Uh, For myself, uh, I'm a certified hypnotherapist, uh, NLP, Neuro Linguistics Programming practitioner, and have had uh, more education and behavior change than any other individual in the fitness industry. Um, And that is the platform that we've built Engage Personal Training around. So let's talk about habits and changing your behavior. Because at the end of the day, if you want to get into shape, if you want to lose weight, if you want to get stronger, it all comes down to changing behavior. So what is a habit? The first thing is you have to understand what a habit is if you're going to change habits or break habits. So habits are essentially our subconscious drive based on triggers. So 95% of what we do is driven by subconscious uh, behavior loops. And these are what are called habits. This is habitual behavior. So it's actually really important to distinguish what habits really are. Um, in order to start changing them. So habits include um, where you put your keys when you walk in the house, right? It includes the the route you drive to work when, you know, you get to work and you like kind of spaced out the whole way there and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't even remember driving to work, right? These are all habits that have become ingrained. They're automatic behaviors that your brain has done so many times that it can just go on autopilot. And that autopilot... Uh, is a really important thing to remember, right? So essentially the way the brain works is our brains process every single piece of information that is coming our way. If we manually uh, sorted through all that information, there's absolutely, we would just be overloaded. Our brains would explode. um, We would crash, right? We would mentally, psychologically crash. So a part of our evolution Uh, has to enable this automatic or autopilot function of the brain. So behaviors that have been done so many times uh, create neural networks of trigger and response. And it just says, all right, that's another behavior that can go on autopilot, right? I'll give you an example of seeing this in action. Uh, Two years ago, I moved to a new house, totally different layout of the house. I lived in my previous house for about five years. I had a key hook next to the door. Every day I walked in the door, I would put my key on the hook, go about my life, right? Moved to the new house. There were a handful of times where I walked in the door, tired from work, on autopilot, and tried to put a key on a key hook that didn't exist, right? That's a way that, you know, habits kind of show up in our lives. Um, Other things that affect our health are, habitually grabbing a glass of wine after a long day of work, right? You, you come to when you're halfway through pouring the glass and then you're like, Oh, well, I'm already doing this. So I might as well drink it. Right. We're popping open a bag of junk food or, or whatever driving. Uh, if, the, if you have a route to go home from work that passes a gym and another one that is easier, we typically habitually might drive the easier route instead of going to the gym. And that's one reason why we might not go to the gym. So that's, you know, your basic understanding of habits. They are the automatic behaviors 
that your brain has deemed, all right, we got this. We don't need to think about this anymore. Not, and after the age of 35, 95% of the behaviors that we do are completely subconscious or non-conscious and automatic. So it can be difficult to change habits, especially if you don't do what I'm about to teach you or the engage method of habit change. So the first things first is uh, here's the anatomy of a habit. There's essentially four stages of this behavior loop. The first one is the cue or the trigger, right? So the environmental trigger. So you see something, you feel something, you smell something in your environment that triggers a feeling or a craving. So you walk in your house and you see the key hook. The craving is to raise your hand and put it on the thing because that's what you've done all the time. And that's just where your brain naturally goes, right? That's, and the response is the actual behavior. So you raise your hand and you put the key on the key hook. The reward for that, and while it sounds a little silly, but it is a reward that you can have peace of mind knowing that your keys are in a place that you know exactly where they are, right? The reward is lack of cognitive load. So the, the, your brain doesn't have to work hard for it because if you keep always put your keys in a different place in the house, you're just going to lose them. So the cue is shutting the door behind you. The craving is I need the safety of knowing where my keys are. I'm going to raise my hand. The response, hang in the keys. And the reward is letting loose and saying, oh, now I know where they are. I'm good, all right? This habit loop is, is running constantly in our lives, all right? Going back to the uh, glass of wine, the cue being you kick your shoes off after a long day of work. You have a craving for the glass of wine that you've had or poured yourself every single night. Your response is to grab the bottle. The reward is, I mean, there's a lot of, rewards that our that our brains get from alcohol it's you know intoxicating uh, makes us feel good it decreases stress at least you know in our minds um, that's a whole other thing about what it's actually doing but that's how behaviors happen and here's where we get to the engage habit method uh, which I call the river method so essentially what's happening in the brain is every time a trigger, leads to a response, you are ingraining a neural pathway between environment and behavior. So the first time you ever poured that glass of wine after a hard day when you're feeling stressed or tired, you have ingrained a neural pathway in your brain through neurons with 6 p.m., tired, stressed, and that's the cue your environment and taking that first sip of wine. That's the re response and the reward that you get, right? First time you do that, you create, you, you attach the environment with that response and you're getting a reward, right? Um, a lot of other ways to look at this, but the stronger the reward, the deeper you ingrain that, right? It creates what's called one trial learning. And this is why drugs are so, uh, like really powerful narcotics are really disastrous is because the first time you do it is such a powerful effect that you immediately get addicted, right? Um, so the bigger the reward that you get from that response, the more appealing that behavior is. So you dig that deeper, you do it again tomorrow night, you dig it a little bit deeper, you do it again and again and again. Um, and you just dig this neural pathway so deep that it just becomes completely automatic, right? And I, I want you to visualize a river, a river that leads to a body of water. It's the ocean or a lake, all right? What determines the path of that river? It's an indentation or a groove that creates the easiest path of the water to take to the body of water. So if you've got that river flowing in your mind, you're picturing that, what I want you to do is I want you to think of 
the water and the river constantly flowing is almost like all of the data that we're inputting, taking in as we go about our lives. It's constant. We're constantly coming across triggers and responses and sights and smells that trigger automatic behavior. The body of water is the response and the reward based on that pathway. So it's the behavior that we always do is the outcome, right? So another word is outcome. So you've done that behavior. You've poured that glass of wine so many times that that river always leads to drinking wine at night because that's where the trench was the deepest. Now, if I challenged you and I said, we've got this river that leads to, you know, the, the Lake Merlot wine. How would you, and I said, we need to change this to, uh, let's just say a protein shake. That's a really lame thing, but let's just use it as an example. And I said, hey, we've got this river. The water's not going to stop flowing, but we need to move the direct the outcome from Lake Chardonnay to Lake Engage Labs protein shake. All right, little plug there from our best biggest sponsor. How would you do it? So if you had to redirect the flow of a rushing river, what's the first thing you have to do? The first thing you have to do is to build a dam. You've got to stop the flow of water right? Well, sorry, let me reverse a little bit. The first thing you have to do is identify and get very, very clear on each phase of the habit. What's the trigger? What's the craving that you get? What's the response? And what's the reward that you get? So take a piece of paper and write, again, I'm going to use a glass of wine at night just for this example, but take your habit, write it at the top of the paper and just write cue, craving, response, and reward start to wrap your head around when do I do this? What's the cue? What's the like craving that makes me want to move towards that? What is the thing? What is the behavior? And then what's the reward that I get? And sometimes that can be hard because it's kind of, it's kind of weird. Like again, the keys, the reward for the keys on the hook is like just mental, uh, removing thoughts, right? It's just mental safety of knowing where they are. So now that you've understood each component of the habit, we're changing the flow of water in the river. First thing you do to stop that flow of water is to build a dam, right? Remove the ability to fulfill that habit, right? So what does that look like in the glass of wine is get rid of the wine, right? If you don't have wine, you can't fulfill the habit of you come home from work, you're really stressed, you grab the wine, the wine's not there, okay? That's not realistic. Some people are wine snobs. They got whole areas of their house dedicated to wine. Um, maybe you could move it. Maybe you could lock the wine cellar. Maybe you could move the wine to a place that is not easily accessible. The rule of thumb here is 20 seconds. So the rule of thumb is the 20 second rule. Any behavior that takes 20 seconds or more to at least initiate, you know, you may not be able to get the bottle, open it, pour it, X, Y, and Z in 20 seconds, but you can get up and move towards it. So how can you make the habit that you want to change take longer than 20 seconds to initiate? So that's building a dam. You remove the ability for that water to keep moving towards that outcome. And then you have to build a new trench, right? Right. The water is always going to flow in the area of least resistance or the area that's deepest. That's why it's been flowing in that one direction. And then just going back to that neural pathway in the brain, okay, you've got to have a new outcome. And how do you decide on, on the new behavior? Sorry, the new behavior, the response. First, it's important to understand what the reward that you were getting was because we are naturally driven towards reward, right? Typically we do things because it gives us some sort of reward. So the wine uh, had this intoxicating effect. It fulfilled the, the 
need to have something to sip on something or you liked, you enjoyed the flavor or whatever. Okay. The reward was relaxation. So that's the reward. So if we need to move this flowing river, this rapid flowing river to a new outcome, which is drink a protein shake, we have to find a way to tap some sort of similar reward because if there's no reward for what we do, we're going to have a really hard time making this last. So now that we've got the reward and maybe it's, all right, I can mimic this as closely as possible. I can put the protein shake in a wine glass. I can put it in the same area as the wine was, right? Make it as similar as possible if you want to be most effective. And so you've built the dam, right? You've made the wine inaccessible. And now you've got to start building the trench, right? The first time you do this is going to feel unnatural. It's going to feel weird. It's going to feel uncomfortable. And the reason that I like this analogy of the river and the trenches is because it does take effort. Just like if you were physically rerouting a flooding, flowing river, it takes effort to like take the shovel and start digging that trench, right? And the first pass at it is going to be really shallow. So the water isn't really going to just redirect. So the first couple passes through this new behavior are going to require effort and they're going to require intention. Um, so you do have to approach it with an understanding that you're not going to snap your fingers and overcome the hundreds of nights that you've ingrained this behavior. It's not that easy. It is like digging in your trench, but just like rerouting the water, there's some sort of benefit to doing that, right? So every time I would say for the first few weeks, you're digging that trench, you're leading to a new outcome, which is the protein shake. Uh, you've made the reward as you know, as, as appealing as possible. Uh, you remind yourself that it's healthier and, and the results that you're going to get from it, whatever it is. That is how we start to change habits, right? Because at some point, you've dug that trench deep enough by repeated behavior that it has now become deeper than the original habit, that neural pathway, the new neural pathway, is deeper and just way easier for water to flow through and now you've created a new habit that has become automatic and subconscious. It's not as simple as saying, you know, just do this one thing. It does take effort. Um, and that's why most people don't stick with it. But if you're listening to this podcast, uh, I am inclined to believe that you are committed to improving your health. Um, and you've joined Engage Personal Training or Gage Strength Training. And you are the type of person that, has goals for your health. And if you do, this is the most effective method of changing behavior and changing habits. Um, so first identify the habit, identify each stage of that habit loop from cue or trigger, the craving that you feel, the response, what the behavior is, and the reward. And start finding ways to respond differently or act differently that will give you a similar reward. That is the key to changing long-term habits. That is the work we do at Engage Personal Training that we help our clients transform their health, transform their bodies, and just completely change their lives by following this method. 